Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InpoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to continue on with our PlayFab tutorial series. In the last lesson, we showed you how to create a basic login and registration system for your game. In this video, we want to expound on those principles and go through some of the best practices for authenticating players in your game. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Now real quick, there's one thing that I should have showed you at the end of the last lesson, and that is the back end where we can see the players that are being registered for our game. And so here I've gone to my PlayFabs account, and here you can see I have my PlayFab test game. And if I select that, and then if I go to players, you can see we have these different entries, which are the different accounts that I have registered for my game. So if I select one of these and then I scroll down, you can see here I have my PlayFab username, which I had to enter in, which is InfoGamer. And then here I have hidden the PlayFab login email. And if I were to click this, it would then reveal that it is my InfoGamer email. So that's something that's really cool to see that our game is actually working and it's populating our backend with the users that are registering for our game. So now let's get on with this lesson. So here I have my PlayFab project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that we're going to do is open up our PlayFab login script. Now in the PlayFab documentation for login basics and best practices, the first thing it talks about is what's called anonymous logins. This is where you use the ID of the device you're on to register and log in the player. These are good for mobile platforms such as Android and iOS because it allows you to register and log in the player without them having to put in any information. Then if the player decides that they want to be able to recover their game state and be able to log in to their same account on different devices, they can link their account to an email or a Facebook or even a Google account. And this is what they call recoverable logins. So you have anonymous logins and you have recoverable logins. So what we created in the last video using the player's email and password to register and log them in is an example of a recoverable login. But if the player is on Android or iOS, it might be a good idea for us to implement an anonymous login. And we're going to do this within our start function. So the first thing that we're going to do is after we have this if statement where we're checking to see if we've saved the player's email to our player prefs, we're then going to add an else statement. And so this will be if we haven't saved any login information for the player. Inside this else statement, we need to create a platform dependent region to check to see if we're on Android. And so I'm going to type pound if, and then I'm going to type in all caps, unity underscore Android. And then after this, I'm going to type pound and then end if. I'm then going to save this and I'm going to go back to Unity. And what we need to do is we need to go to our build settings and we need to select our Android platform and then we need to click switch platform. Once it's finished switching platforms, we'll see a Unity logo next to the Android platform. And then we can go back to Visual Studios. I'm then going to reload our script. I'm going to click yes. This will make it so that our code isn't commented out in between our if and our end if region. Inside this region, we need to create a new request variable. And so I'm going to type var, and then I'm going to call this request Android. We're going to set it equal to new, and then we're going to call login with Android device ID request. Inside curly braces, we're going to type Android device ID, and we're going to set it equal to the return of a new function. And we'll call this function return Android ID. On the next line of code, we're going to send this request. And so I'm going to type play fab client API dot log in with Android device ID. We're then going to pass in our request Android. And then we need a callback function for a successful login and a callback function for a failed login. And so for the success login, I'm just going to copy our other success login. I'm going to paste it. But then I'm going to change the name to login Android success. And for this function, we can remove our player preferences because we don't have an email and a password to save. 
For our failure function, I'm going to copy our other on login failure function, and I'm going to paste it below. And then I'm going to change it to on login Android failure. And then in here, we can just debug the error message. So I'm going to type debug.log, and then we're going to pass in error.generate error code. We can then call these functions where we send our request. And so the first one is going to be our on login Android success. And we don't need to put the parentheses. We then need to call our on login Android failure. And we don't need the parentheses. So now we need to create this return Android ID function. And I'm actually going to rename this to return mobile ID. So I'm going to then copy this function, We're then going to scroll down to the bottom. And here we can type public static string, and then we're going to paste the function. Inside this function, we first need to get the device ID. And for this, I'm going to create a new local string variable. We can call this device ID. And we're going to set it equal to system info dot device unique identifier. We can then return the string value. So as you can see, we're no longer receiving an error for this function. So that's all good. At this point, I'm going to save my script. Now there's one more thing that I want to make sure that we're doing inside the curly braces for our Android request. And that is I want to make sure that the create account boolean variable is set to true. Now this might be redundant if the default value is already true, but what this does is it makes sure that we register the account for the device ID automatically. So now that we've created this anonymous login for Android devices, let's do the same thing for iOS devices. And so I'm going to create a region for iOS. So I'm going to type pound if, and then in all caps, I'm going to type unity underscore iOS, and then I'm going to type pound and if. Now inside this region, we're going to do pretty much the same thing as we did for Android, but some of the terminology is going to be a little bit different. So first off, we're going to create a new variable, so var, and you can see how everything's commented out. So to fix this, we can save our script, go back to Unity, and then I'm going to switch to our iOS build platform. Once it's finished switching, you'll see the Unity logo next to the iOS build platform. And when we go back to our script, it'll ask us to reload. And now you can see that the Android code is commented out and the iOS code is active. And so we're going to create this variable. We're going to call it request iOS. We're going to set it equal to new log in with iOS device ID request. In curly braces, we're going to type device ID equals, and then we're going to type return mobile ID, and then we're going to set create account equal to true. We then want to send this request, and so on the next line, I'm going to type playfab client API dot log in with iOS device ID. In parentheses, we're going to pass in our request iOS, and then we can use our on login with Android success and our on login with Android failure. But I'm going to change these function names. So for the on login Android success, I'm going to change this to on login mobile success. And then we can copy this function name and paste it here and here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the on login Android failure. I'm going to change it to on login mobile failure. I'm going to copy that function name and I'm going to paste it here and here. So now that we've created these anonymous logins, let's create a way for the players to add a username and password to this account so that it becomes recoverable. For this, we can first save this script and go back to Unity. Once back inside Unity, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our login panel. I'm going to rename this to add login panel. 
And so we have our login panel, which will be for logging in with an existing username and password or for registering a username and password. And then we'll have this panel, which will be identical, but this one will be for adding a username and password to an existing account. So now let's create our button. I'm going to right click on our canvas, go down to UI, and I'm going to select button. And then going to resize and reposition this button on our canvas. All right, so I moved this button down to the bottom of our screen. I made it a little bit bigger and I changed the text so that it says create recovery account. And then it's also important to note that this button is not a child to any of our other panels. Once we have our add login panel and this button, we can then go back to our PlayFab login script. Once back in here, we want to scroll up to the top and I'm going to create two new game objects. The first one will be a public game object and this will be our add login panel. The second one will be a public game object and this will be our recover button. Now what we can do is if we already have a username and password for our player, we can then disable this button. And so I'm going to scroll down to our on login success function and where we disable our login panel, I'm also going to disable our recover button. Now what we can do is we can create a public function that we can pair to this button. And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and here I'm going to type public void and we can call this our open add login. Inside here we want to call our add login panel and then say dot set active. We're going to pass in true. Now what we can do is we can create a public function that we can pair to the button that's on our add login panel. And so this is going to be another public void function. I'm going to call this on click add login. The code inside this function is going to be similar to where we are registering a player. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it in here. Then we need to change some of the terminology. And so rather than register request, I'm going to call this add login request. We then need to set this equal to a new add username password request. All the values inside the curly braces are going to be the same, but then on the next line, rather than register playfab user, we're going to type add username password. We then need to rename this variable to the same variable here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. So now you can see that we're receiving an error for this callback function because the return type is different. And so I'm going to scroll up to our on registration success, which is right here. I'm going to copy it. Let's scroll back down to below this function. I'm going to paste it in here. We can then rename it to something like on add login success. And if we cursor over this error message, you can see that the return parameter is add username password result. And so we're going to rename this parameter to add username password result. And it's important that we choose result instead of request. We can then copy this function name and paste it in here. Now what we can do is we can save this script and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we first want to select our open add login. And then going to scroll down to our on click. I'm going to click this plus sign and then going to grab our PlayFab login game object, drag it into this field here, use the drop down menu to go to PlayFab login. And then I'm going to find our open add login. We then want to select our add login panel and I'm going to expand it. We then need to find the button and I'm going to select that. I'm going to go down to the on click. We're then going to use the drop down menu to change the function to on click add login. Then what I want to do is I want to hide our add login panel. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to select our playfab login game object and we need to set these two variables. So I'm going to select our add login panel and drag it in here and then our open add login and drag it in here. Now what I'm going to do is build this project onto my Android device and see if it works. All right, so here I have my project built out to my Android device. And when my application first opened, it had the login panel displayed. And then like a split second later, it disappeared. And that's because we're disabling the login panel 
when we've created an account using our Android device ID. But you can see that we still have the Create Recovery Account button enabled. Now before we click that button, I want to go over to my Playfab's backend and see if it created this account. So here I am on my Playfab backend, and I'm going to select Players. And now you can see that we have four different entries, and the top one is an Android device. You can see that it has the Android icon next to it. And so there you can see that I have a new account for this device. So now let's try adding a username and password to this Android account. So I'm going to click the Create Recovery Account, and there you can see that my add login panel has appeared. Now I can type in a username and let's just call this Android Tester. For the email I need to enter in an email that I haven't used yet and then we need to type in a password. I'm then going to click login but before I do there's one thing that I want to mention about this panel. We could customize it a lot more. We could put a banner up at the top that says add username and password so that you can recover your account in the future. We could add a confirm password field and then we could check to make sure that the passwords are the same. Um, but for now I'm just going to click login. Now the panel didn't disappear. I'm going to double check make sure it's working. So if I refresh this page go to our Android account, scroll down, you can see that the Playfab username says Android Tester. And so it looks like it's working. We're just not disabling that panel. So real quick, before we fix that, I'm going to restart my application. And there you can see that both the login panel and the create recovery account button has disappeared. And so it looks like everything's working. To fix the problem with the add login panel not disappearing, we need to go to the add login success function. And where we are disabling the login panel, we want to instead disable the add login panel. That's where we were going wrong. So I can then save the script and that should fix that problem. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create an anonymous login using the Android and iOS device IDs, and then also how to turn that anonymous login into a recoverable login using username, email, and password. If you enjoyed this lesson and you found it to be informational, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. Also, subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.